Thank you, my dear students. It's my pleasure to invite you in today's program. Welcome in today's program. Before I start with our class, I would like to have if any of you have got any doubt about the last session. In the last session, we have talked about instructional strategy or training plan. If you have got any doubt or any question to ask regarding that, you are most welcome. As I told you yesterday, last time there was a session on instructional strategy or training plan. Do you have any question on that? Otherwise, we'll go ahead with our today's schedule. No, I think there is no question. So uh, let me go ahead. Last time we have talked about the instructional strategy, that is, what are the things that you need to do? Those are to be before implementing the training, the actual training program, you have to plan out, chalk out, whatever things you require to make the training event happen. So there are so many things involved in it. Right from the layout of the room to the materials and uh, the training, the trainer manual, so many things are required to be seen in that whole process. So, and those are very important and significant part of the training event to happen. Today we have got the session on infrastructure planning for training process. As you understand, the training process has to happen for that we require uh, many infrastructure. And those play a very significant role because that gives us the ambience, that gives us the environment, that gives us all the facilities that are required to carry out the training uh, to achieve its objective. So uh, today's session is on infrastructure planning for training process to happen. So let me now just now share the PowerPoint presentation, but at the same time, I must trace upon this fact, never ignore this aspect because the training, wherever they are going to sit, they are going to uh, listen to the training program. They're going to become part of the entire training program. The environment is a very important aspect. The training material that you take, the equipment that you use, everything has got some bearing on the, how the training will be accepted by the, uh, by the, tra by the trainees in the classroom. So therefore, it's very important to take care of all these things. It is not only the classroom, but before that classroom also, there are many things which have to be carried out to uh, make the event happen. So let me just sh first share you with the PowerPoint presentation so that I can go ahead. I think it's all visible to you. So, infrastructure planning for training process, day two. The infrastructure for implementing the training process, there are many infrastructure which have to be taken care of. And as a trainer, we must understand that all these aspects are of a lot of importance for the successful completion of the training program. It is not merely the topics, not merely the subject that is important, but you have to create an atmosphere an environment in which the transfer of training takes place properly. And we can make happen the training event. So out of that, there are facilities, facilities in the sense key, there are various facilities which are required, which will be seen a little later. The training site where the training is going to be, uh, going to happen. The logistical arrangement, the people coming and going for the training program, there's, if it is being done somewhere outside, where they're going to stay, the hotel arrangement, the food, boarding and lodging arrangement, those are important issues. The physical arrangement in the training uh, site where how the sitting arrangement will be, how the, what will be the room, and how the room will be, the, what will be the layout of the room, and everything is a very important issue. The environment should be calm and quiet where 
uh, the training can happen without any disturbance. The equipment that are going to be used in the training process, right from your LCD projector to the electronic board and all that, whatever is available in the for the particular event. The materials that is required, the material, the training material for the trainer, for the trainees, and all that, those are also very important issues to be taken care of and which have to be made beforehand. The various furniture that we're going to use there, even those are going to the sitting arrangement should be proper. They must have a comfortable chairs. And if there is a desk, then that, that those should be comfortable. And um, all these things have to be taken care of to make the training process happen. So let us now see one by one. The training facilities, when you talk about the training can happen, the training can happen at different places. It may be an in-house program, in-house program, in-house program where um, the organization where the training is being imparted, they may have their own training center or they may have got a an auditorium and depends depending upon the number of participants they're going to uh, going to participate in that process so <clears throat> that is an important issue there the in-house training facility there may be a seminar room required and if there is a seminar room required is there any enough space available the sitting arrangement is proper that has to be ensured before the actual training starts taking place the training can happen in-house. The training can happen off-site. If it's an off-site, as I said, in in-house training, then there are availability of training center or the, or the training hall is there. But if it is off-site, means it is somewhere outside, and that may be uh, some other place where, uh, apart from the place, uh, the particular organization of the training is being held, then there it may be a hotel also. So there the reservation is to be done. The design of the room is to be seen. The room should have, and apart from the training hall, there should have a breakout room where if required, somebody can sit and make a study or uh, can wait there, or they can make a, a meeting there, or they can have a group meetings and all that. The sitting arrangements have to be seen properly. In some place, some cases, what happens is there, are, uh, there is a big hall and the hall is divided into two portions and there is a divider in between. One has to take a lot of care about that because when there is a divider, there is a chance of noise coming from one room to the other room, which may be a lot of disturbance to uh, both the training, um, the training events, or those are to be taken care of. Then maybe we have to think about the soundproofing system. That is uh, uh, the sound should not be, um, should be, um, should not be there, should not have any echo and all that. So that there is just so that any disturbance should not take place. The program may be locational, means somewhere outside in the outside resort or any other place where the people may have to stay overnight and the training will be imparted there. For that again, if it is a hotel or any auditorium or any other um, organization's uh, training center, the reservation is to be made uh, beforehand. The boarding facilities are to be taken care of. The materials required for the stay of the people that has to be taken care of. And the materials for the training has to be shifted from, uh, the, from the place to the place of uh, training. And for that, even the transportation for the taking the materials as well as for the people who are going to stay there, for them, the people who are going to join the training program, the transportation facilities are to be taken care of. So it may be an house program, it may be an offsite program, it may be a locational program wherever it may be, the, the three things should be taken into, uh, taken into mm -hmm. consideration. Number one, I'll start with an auditorium. If there is a big hall, auditorium is generally taken for the number of, when the participants are, number of participants are more. So uh, depending upon the number of participants, the sitting capacity has to be ensured that how many people can be accommodated there, that has to be assessed before. The availability, and if there is an auditorium, there is the Microphone is a must because uh, the sound cannot reach otherwise to the big entire hall. The LCD projectors are to be arranged. At times it may be required to have the videography of the program. So there should have an arrangement for uh, taking the video of the program. 
there is a requirement of an podium on which the trainee can um, uh, get a support of that and can um, use that podium properly because it happens there is a difference between the hall and the auditorium in an auditorium the trainer cannot go inside the people generally they he may uh, stand on a dais and from there he should be he should get a place like podium from where he can give his deliberations in other case there may be a hall where the number of participants are comparatively less but the hall should have enough space depending upon the number of participants that are going to take place there should have enough of moving space because the trainer may have to move in between the participants depending upon the style of the trainer so there should have enough moving space because sometimes it is also required that they should make any group meetings and all that where the trainer has to go inside at the training hall there should be proper boards lcd projectors and pointers for the the presentation pointers and all that should be available there uh, there may be a times requirement of seminar room where the people may have to sit separately from the group and can make a seminar or some discussion or some group discussion kind of thing so there should have enough space for that along with the proper sitting arrangement all these training facilities are to be ensured before and because once the training is started the disturbance is uh, really going to uh, disturb the entire process the event so the people who are in charge of arranging the training program they must take care of this issue properly before and um, and whenever somebody is going to hire a training hall or, a, or an auditorium they must go before and prior to the day of the training and can ensure that everything is in order and the training can be can go very smoothly if there is any change required that can be uh, done properly so this is something which is of a lot of importance now let us see the offsite training facilities in particular when you are talking about offsite training facilities it means what the training facility is going to be conducted not in house it is going to be conducted somewhere else it may be hotel it may be a place outside it may be in another uh, training auditorium somebody else and so uh, what are the specialties of that and what are the pros and cons of that having an offsite training facility well in an offsite training facility the first one is there is no need of infrastructure because if the training is going to be conducted in house there is a need for making the arrangements of our entire infrastructure within the within the organization right and uh, if it is an outside facility then it should be taken care of before and that infrastructure will be provided in that place and so there is no need of infrastructure the another benefit of this there is no interruption in the training because when some program is being conducted in house there is a possibility that the people who are attending the training program may be at times they are disturbed by uh, by the department concerned for any particular work or some emergent work so if uh, the program is being conducted outside in an offsite they are totally uh, totally out of that out of that situation and there will be no disturbance at all so interruption will be uh, very minimal the change of pace you know there is a change of pace in the sense at uh, the regular routine if the program is being conducted in house uh, not much of change is there because you know in a training program a training program is not it is a whole thing it's a whole process it's not merely getting the knowledge it's an entire change of the attitude of the people and the change of attitude takes place in the change of state takes place change of mental state takes place whenever they are in an in house program in a local in house program their mind may be occupied with the with their work with their job with the responsibilities they have to carry out and so but when it is off site program there will be change of pace they will be totally out of that context out of that situation and there is no disturbance not only the disturbance the mental state will change there will be feeling of being relaxed from their day to day routine and that makes a pattern breaking for the people pattern breaking it changes the pattern of the mind the state of mind is is changed and they um, can really be totally involved in the entire training process and apart from that it is from that point of view we can say that this is something which can help the help removing the stress of the people when it is an in house training uh, since there is at the back of their mind there will always be that their responsibility will pick up and they will always keep on thinking about what's going to happen to his job or some 
a particular responsibility or some particular work which is uh, pending at that end. So if it is not there and they are removed from the day-to-day -day routine and day-to-day -day, uh, environment, the, the stress is likely to remove to a large extent. So it is, it, although it's not uh, training in a different place and offsite is not merely for the resting, but it definitely gives a change in the mental state and they get more relaxed and it's really going to be beneficial for the people to accept the training program, the training, uh, whatever the training inputs they're getting, because they'll be totally involved throughout the day and even in the night at the place where they're staying, they'll be totally involved in the training process. So therefore, uh, it, it, it has got a lot of impact on that. So although there is no need of infrastructure, that's one benefit. There's no interruption of the training, there's a benefit. There's a change of pace, there's a benefit. There's a pattern breaking, there's a benefit. There's a stress moving, there's a benefit, but there is a, there's an issue with it. Where is the, where is the, what is the, what are the shortcomings of the shortcomings is that we have to send all people from that to that particular place. So there is a, um, a question of transportation and the cost is involved and you are going to another person's uh, place or you are going to um, book a hotel. So the expenditure will be involved. So it will depend upon that what kind of program you are going to make. What are the importance of that program? What are the expectations of that program? What the organization is going to, uh, how the organization is going to be benefited out of that uh, particular program? So that will depend upon. So the pros and cons will be seen from that point of view. The physical arrangements there <clears throat> need to have, if you're having an offsite training facility, so beforehand you have to go and choose for a venue. The venue should be taken, should be seen from different points of view. It should be a place where people can easily travel and go. So if it is somewhere in between, uh, the people will come from different uh, parts of the country. So it should be in a place where they can very easily reach there. The transportation facility as um, proper can be, they can have a proper transportation facility to go there. So that that's one. The second point is that the venue should be in a common quiet place where people can go and have some change in their, uh, from their day-to-day -day routine. They can have a very peaceful atmosphere and an atmosphere of learning can be created there, right? As this is the second aspect. And uh, th the third aspect may be that the, the place, the venue means the auditorium or the hall that has been given, that should be proper, that should be enough to accommodate the people and all the facilities are available without any uh, difficulty. And then within that premises, within the venue, that is the, the hall or the auditorium, the furniture should be properly placed. I mean, the furniture will depend upon, uh, not only the furniture, the layout of the furniture is, is a very important issue be there. And that will depend upon what kind of program is it. There may be a program where there will be a lot of group discussions and people should sit in a round table or there may be a, a hall type uh, program where people will just sit and listen to the program. So uh, the furniture should be according to that. And the room configuration will be according to that. And the, how the people will sit, where the people will sit, what will be the arrangement of the uh, chairs and tables and all that. And that configuration has to be seen before. And, um, and so it's always advisable that before the training program takes place, one should visit that place and see that what are the facilities available there and how that is going to really impact that entire training program. In particular, the trainer has also, it's desirable that trainer also visits that particular place and see that how he's going to move around within the people, what is the uh, position of the board and all other things which is uh, available there. Is it convenient for him? If there's a need for podium, the podium is there in, in its proper place that, that should be ensured. Equipments and material for training delivery. It's the most, um, I mean, um, disturbing thing when the training is in training program is in process and where the certain equipments, some materials are not available. So it should be seen that everything is available. Equipment in the same, there is a projector, the sound box, the microphone, uh, the board, the duster, and everything is available there in time. Even the materials which are to be supplied to the people, those are those are available uh, properly. <clears throat> So, so that the training delivery can go smoothly. And as um, in particular in case when there is an offline program, when you're thinking of giving some material to the people, 
those materials have to be arranged before and and that must be transported to that place so that you should not be situation that the materials are not there so and those are to be, if there is a need for printing the materials or there is a need for cyclostyle sorry the photocopying the and uh, the paper those are to be done before and and those should be available in time and when it is required to them when it is required to be distributed to them it should be done at the proper time so this uh, the this physical arrangement in the offsite training facilities and all other infrastructural requirement has to be uh, taken care of uh, before the training actual training program starts taking place the next point is when we talk about this i'm going to talk about here in detail the choosing the venue what are the things that to be taken care of while choosing the venue in an on site training <clears throat> choosing the venue when you are talking of the on site training and you talking of the off site training this is the two different things when you talking of the on site training uh, that is the place of your uh, the in house training or the, uh, the or the particular place or the area where the training is going to be conducted where the actual organization is there how the people are staying advantages are that accessibility for trainees and trainees and trainer they can very easily go to that place go to that venue so that the question of transportation and all that will not is not there it is accessible easily accessible uh, to them the familiarity for trainees and trainer this is a place where in a on site training the place is familiar to the trainers and the trainees so there is an issue of and sometimes it becomes an issue for attending a training program somebody may have some a uh, difficult in leaving the family or may have some emergent issue where it's difficult but in case of an on site training this problem is not there economy and cost effectiveness yes the cost is going to be less uh, if the organization has got their own training hall uh, then the the cost is very very minimal so the cost of transportation boarding and lodging is not there uh, it's easier to fix equipment materials etc because that is a place where they are usually go conducting the training program so most of the things are already fixed the equipments are available the materials are already there the disadvantage is uh, the more important issue in this case and the disadvantage is this distraction for office duties the people are attending the training program there is a chance of distraction by the concerned department where they are working for and uh, maybe any very even very, very very small issues they may be disturbed and that will it will destroy the whole uh, the temperament of attending the training program help for setting up equipment catering is not available i mean uh, the issue here is it is not all is so but it's quite possible if you're hiring a place there people will be engaged in doing that because they're paying for that but where is in a in another place there may be a chance that equipments are the nobody is there to set up the equipment but in general it may not happen so if there is a training hall or the training facilities training infrastructure available to any organization there will be availability of people who will be taking care of that and at least that should be uh, managed that some people will take care of the setting of the equipment and uh, the catering and all that if it is not there that should be arranged before and uh the another disadvantage is there is that, that there is a mental uh, barricade will be there uh, the, the, this is just the same routine that they are following there is no change the training is as i told you earlier the training is is the things which should change the state of mind of people so they must have a very fresh air a fresh thinking and thinking a fresh and from so this is possible when only when they really change the change the place go to a different atmosphere and um, i can start uh, doing things afresh there but here in this case the things will become more or less the same routine so which is uh, one one of the disadvantage right <clears throat> and as i guess it if you can talk about this room layout also the choosing the venue when it is an off site training program the same questions are available uh, are there which i have already discussed but these advantages which i have said then accessibility and familiarity for trainees and trainers economy and cost effectiveness easier to fix equipment materials is not available but the other advantage is that there is no distraction for the office routine the equipment set up taken care of by the people who from whom the things are hired the routine will be changed those are the advantages now talk about the room layout the training room is a very very important issue because that is the place that is the temple where people are going to learn certain things and therefore and that should be taken care of properly now uh, it should be learner friendly learner friendly in the sense it should be peaceful it should be uh, cozy and uh, where people can 
uh, really get attention to the be become totally attentive to the uh, training program without a distraction from there. Uh, generally, it is desirable that it should be windowless room because there may be possibility of a distraction if the room has got many windows. And um, uh, and if at all uh, there is no window, if there is window, they should have curtains <clears throat> so that that distraction or the disturbance may not be there or the sounds may not uh, may be minimal from outside. That way it should be materials posted on walls. Uh, this is in fact to creating an environment. The related materials, the train, the program, the subject on which the training program is going to be conducted, it's always good to have some good posters related to that so that people can have the moment they enter inside the room, they can have that mental picture, that, that visual effect in their mind, uh, thinking about that particular subject being involved in that process. The lighting arrangement should be, should be proper. The lighting arrangement should be proper. There will be enough light in the room. Uh, the room a desirably square, although it doesn't matter much, but it matters in the sense the sound becomes proper and the size of the room and the movement becomes easier if there's a square room. The room should be soundproof so there should not have any echo in the room. And if there is some adjacent hall from that, the sound should not uh, come uh, into that room. The temperature of the room should be cozy because that's going to be a very, very disturbing factor, uh, particularly the change of seasons, there may be a difficulty. If it is in that particular season, the air conditioning should properly run because air conditioning is not doing, is not proper, there may be a lot of disturbance in the entire um, training environment. Uh, one should take care of that there should have any noisy fans, uh, so to say that there should be any noise in between which undesirable noise should not be there. Wherever required, there should be hanging charts and posters, as I told you earlier also, hanging charts and posters to facilitate the training process, to give a visual effect to the people. The board should be adequately, properly placed, and it should be adequate for writing the, uh, the things which is by the uh, trainer. And the whiteboard, it may be it generally today, we are using the whiteboard and markers, uh, but today there are smart boards also where you know, electronically you can write and, and that may be a little costly for if not there, at least the whiteboard should be there. It should be the duster and the, uh, and the marker should be properly placed and available as and when it's required. The lighting control system should be there whenever there is a requirement because at times in the training program, the light has to be made dim or uh, it, it should be uh, other than the normal lighting, the light has to be made dimmer. Say for example, there is a uh, program is going on and some doing some kind of meditation. So the light has to be made dim or uh, so that that lighting control should be there. The audio facility should be proper so that people, uh, the, all the participants from the all corners of the room can, uh, can easily listen to whatever the trainer is saying. And if it is a uh, audio facility is not there and if it is a big hall, it becomes a very difficult thing for the trainer because he has to shout and that is not always desirable. So that audio facility should be there. Audio facility should be there. It means there should be a microphone, proper microphone. Uh, it may be wireless or wired, whatever is available, but uh, if it is wireless, it's the best because uh, in a wireless microphone, the, the trainer can move inside the people and can deliver better. So the, the training room itself is a place which should be uh, taken care of properly and things should be seen that these things are available in time. The most important part of the thing is that things are sometimes available, but it is not taken care of before the training program. So one should go and look over these things and see that things as and when uh, the, the availability of these things are there and those are available and wherever it's required, it is fixed and it is taken care of. The, layout is done properly and uh, the boards are clean and uh, LCD projects are properly set then those are also working. These things are something which is very important. And not only that, even before the day when the training program is going to be conducted, at least half an hour before that, the trainer or the person concerned is in charge of they should go there and see that everything is in order and things are working properly. So that if anything is to be done, that can be done uh, at that right at that right point of time, so um, I've given you some the, some of the figures here of the furniture how it should be placed inside the room. Uh, it depends upon what kind of training program is it. Is it a discussion? 
Is it a conference sort of thing? Is it a kind of seminar? Or it's a big hall where people will listen? Is it somewhere that people will sit in cluster? Is it somewhere that people should sit face to face? So depending upon that, the various kind of, uh, it may be U-shaped sitting, it may be single square around when there is a conference kind of things is happening. Uh, it may be a classroom like when there is a uh, vertically the, the, the tables are placed and, or, and chairs are placed, right? If there may be a round table sitting arrangement, uh, it may be V-shaped, it may be a traditional classroom. I mean, it depends upon what kind of, uh, what kind of training program is this and as well as the, what is the convenience of the trainer to give the particular training which is to going to uh, deliver there. So that is also to be seen and that is also to be uh, taken care of. The room um, sitting arrangement is itself is, is a lot of, has got a lot of importance. Uh, <clears throat> uh, at times, I must tell you that it is somewhat, sometimes it becomes very difficult for a trainer to give training if there's no room for movement inside the hall because some some trainers, they find it uh, uh, suffocating not to go inside the people. So that it has to be taken care of, depending upon the, the trainer's uh, characteristics, what, what and how he's going to deliver the training program. Uh, he has to see that what kind of furniture is available, what kind of layout of the room is there, what kind of sitting arrangements is there. This, all these things are highly important, highly crucial for uh, the proper, uh, I mean, the event of the training program to happen. So th those are to be taken care of properly. Now, so far, what we have discussed so far, I will just uh, take a, a revision of that. We have started with the, that this is a, this is a particular topic where we're talk, going to talk about the facilities, the training site, the logistic arrangement, physical arrangement, environment, the equipment, materials, furniture, the training facilities can happen in-house, it can happen off-site, it can happen location somewhere else. And there we need to have some seminar room or some hall or some kind of auditorium. And if any, in the, any of these cases, seminar room or hall or auditorium, we must see there is enough space and all uh, things are available, sitting arrangements is there, every equipment and material is available there. In particular for offsite training facilities, there are certain benefits, advantages. That is, there's no need for infrastructure, there's no interruption in the training process. There is no there is a change of pace. People get changed. The pattern breaks. They, it can remove the stress. And for that, you need to have physical arrangements like choose the venue. You have to choose the furniture. You have to see the room configuration. You have to see the equipment and materials should be available there for the training delivery. And when you choose the venue and for on-site training, there are certain advantages. It is easily accessible for the trainees and trainers. It becomes familiar for the trainees. It's economical and cost-effective. Right, uh, but there are disadvantages that there is no change from the routine, and there is a possibility of being distracted from the office routine. Right, so uh, and then the room layout. We have seen the room layout should be depending upon the um, the trainer, and the room should have all those things which are required: the lighting, soundproofing, materials posted, if required windowless room, uh, soundproofing, temperature should be proper, air conditioning should be proper. Noisy fans shouldn't be there. White board is available. If smart board is there, it's very good. Audio facility is proper. These are all very small things, but very, very important things. And in particular, I must tell you, uh, there may be a situation as a trainer. When you are talking of the trainers, you may be working in an organization and you're in charge of the training portfolio and you are a trainer or in charge of managing the training process, then it is something which you have to take care of. But if you are a freelance trainer, then the, all the more these responsibilities are more because now you are the in charge of this thing. So everything is to be done by you. So you must take care of this thing. Uh, as such, getting a proper hall or a proper auditorium and that too, which is economical, um, keeping in with what the how people are going to pay you, you have to take care of that very properly, right? Because at the end of the day, when people are paying, they must get the proper environment and they should be satisfied with whatever you are delivering, giving to them. So as a freelance trainer also, when you're going to arrange a training program, these things are of highly important because these are the issues which people uh, make complaint of. Apart from the complaint on the training, the more most of the complaints will be maybe either from the venue, for the sitting arrangement, for air conditioning, for the food that is being given, for the, uh, for the staying arrangement. These are the issues which has to be taken care of very 
properly. If all these things are very good, then there is a uh, there is a large possibility that your training program will be uh, proper and people will become happy with it, right? So now whatever I have said so far, I'm going to recap of that. I would like if you have got any question, any practical question, anything that comes into your mind, I'll be very happy to react to that. Please come up. Anybody has got any question in his mind to talk about? So this is Ritu this side, sir. Very good morning. And thank you very much, sir, for a wonderful session and giving us a practical uh, tips for this temple of learning, which is very important. So moving forward, sir, as now the things are going uh, differently as well, the training process may be even online. And uh, would you not like to incorporate some of the team together tips for like online training? How do we enter virtually has to be maintained? How the influencer, would you like to put some light on that aspect? Yes, well? I, I will put some light at the end of this. Now I will put some light as to what's happening today. I'll definitely, oh, I'll okay. definitely do that. I'll definitely Thank you so, sir. Right. Thank you so much. Right. Rest is all great, great sir. Uh, it was really nice. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Anybody else has got any anything to anything to ask? Please come out. No, <clears throat> because a, today there is COVID, is not going to remain forever. So you have to go outside. You have to hire a hall. You have to make training programs which are physical, right? So there, uh, this is also cannot be ignored. And those aspects are very, very, very crucial, I must tell you. This is out of my uh, my practical uh, personal experience in uh, at a, arranging the training programs. When I have been arranging training programs very often, and uh, now it is closed because of COVID. So uh, there are lots of issues which will come in the, in the venue and the hotel people and the food, and the availability of the equipments and materials at time when it is required. So sometimes the current is not there. So there will be many issues will be there. So you have to make an arrangement. You have to see that there is somebody who looks after that. Because ultimately, even if your program is very good, your content is very good, but the people are dissatisfied because of this, these things. And um, that really becomes a, a can, uh, something very disturbing for a trainer. So uh, these are not very small things. These are very important issue at the same time. And another issue which comes into mind is that the cost is a very important issue. You know, you can make the best of the best arrangements and uh, at a best of the best hotels and auditoriums and places, and, but then there is a cost. Cost involvement is there. How much you are going to charge from your uh, from the people? And if you are going to charge from the people, then uh, are you going to give the same kind of facility? And are they, it is possible for them to pay for that? Right. Similarly, in an organization also, uh, you have to see because your everything, your expenditure that you're going to make in this equipment, halls and all that, uh, it will depend upon how much expenditure you can make. And, um, and that will probably be sanctioned by your organization. So uh, you have to make an, make an arrangement by, um, by taking into consideration all these things and weigh the things. And so for that, you may have to go to various places and see which one is most suitable for it. So these are certain issues which are very highly practical, right? So with that, I'm proceeding further with the same thing. Next point is our breakout room. The breakout room is something, you know, there is an availability of a hall is there, but only one hall is not sufficient. You may require a room where you may have to keep your materials, your equipments and all that, where um, uh, uh, equipment shall be kept and uh, at times, whenever it's required, maybe from the training hall, you may have to place some people for a group discussion in a particular room. So there may be small rooms available wherever, whenever it is required, where people can sit together, have a group discussion. Sometimes it happens that the group is divided into four, or, uh, the entire group is divided into four, or participants are divided into four or five groups or six groups. So they go to their uh, concerned rooms and they can discuss there, sit together, talk about, write something, and then they can come back to the hall for making the presentations and all that. So if required, so there is a requirement of uh, ensuring that uh, the breakout rooms are available <clears throat> as also for keeping the thing. So separate room, which should be located close to the main training hall, right? 
for, and that may be required for working of groups in privacy. The group should talk to, talk there for in a, in a private room and for discussion and all that. The, for keeping the flip charts, table, chair, phones, computers, and all that, uh, which may be required at time, in particular when you are in an offsite, uh, offsite, offsite training, you may require a particular room where you can keep your materials and all that. So even that becomes a very, very important issue sometimes. One has to look, the, the purpose of this training program is that to give an insight that the such and such things can happen. And if you know it beforehand, and if you make a list of those things which are required, you know, for me particularly, I'm telling you that when I go for a training program, two days or three days earlier, I may list off maybe 40 items or 40 works, right? And these are the things which are to be arranged. Is this ready with me? And are, is, it has been followed up for that with the people concerned who are from where we are going to give the training program. So each and everything has to be taken care of. The small thing may at times become a very, very difficult thing. A pointer for using the PowerPoint presentation, if you have missed it somewhere, and then the entire program will be disturbed. So that is something, something you know, very, very important, right? So those materials will be taken and if required in a breakout room that can be kept for the and the room is for use for any group discussion any kind of case study any kind of discussion and all that so it depends upon what kind of training method you're using so at times we use, use those kinds of methods where people need to sit together have a discussion uh, and for some time and so that the breakout room becomes very handy for that and one has to take care of that uh, I've already talked about the physical environment, but again, it has come to, uh, once again, uh, maybe I wanted to give more stress on that. Temperature is a very, very important issue for the whole environment, you know, and therefore people have a lot of uh, complaint about the uh, air conditioning. And in general, I'm telling you the outside training program or even the locational training program of uh, the, I think you understand what is a locational program. The, uh, and the advantage of locational program, I just like to stress upon that fact first before I talk about this physical environment. One thing is the, the on-site program. On-site program is the program being conducted in the place where the organization is situated and uh, that is an on-site program. But at times what happens, the number of participants are very high. Say, for example, in a training program, you are going to call 40 people, 50 people, or maybe 60 people. Or even if there is 100 people, we can make two groups. And if there is a big hall available and the subject permits, we can have 100 people. If not, so we can have two groups. It doesn't matter. But it may sometimes happen that Pan India, you have to train 1,000 people. So 1,000 people you are going to call in a centered central location. It is where it involves a lot of expenditure. And in that case, that on-site facility, on-site program is not advisable. The locational program is more advisable. Locational program here means that instead of thousand people moving from different places to a one central place, there may be a set of trainers. Maybe if there are 10 locations, there may be two each, say 20 trainers will move to different sites, right? So one person, two person is going to uh, the Tamil Nadu, two person is going to Kolkata, two person is going to Mumbai, right? So there are people who are going there. Instead of the people coming, the trainer, the train is coming to that central place. The trainers are moving out to different locations. And that is what is known. As, and in that particular location, uh, depending upon the availability of the halls, one can have a hotel arrangement or some somebody else's auditorium, whatever is suitable, uh, that can be done. And the people, the, the trainees are local. So there may be 30 trainees in a particular area, a particular location, and there are two trainers moves from here and the entire training program is conducted and they come back. So the cost involved is high, very, very less. And that is more sensible or advantageous when the number of participants are very high and uh, as well as the training is to be conducted very in a very short period of time. We don't have time to wait for calling 50 people each month and. Uh, and make 12 or program or 20 programs because that is going to really whether some some issue some skill or some uh, legal uh, thing is to be uh, delivered to the people they must know without any uh, waiting time so in that case at random the 20 
20 faculties at 10 places they're going and they're addressing 50 people each or 60 people each. they're in one go they're training 600 people so that becomes more advantage and that's what is called the uh, location program so whether it's an on-site program or it's a location program or it's an off-site program an off-site program is not like location off-site program is the program is being conducted not here in the local area it is being con uh, conducted somewhere else in particular that purpose is more change of the people change of the mindset of the people right so um, in all cases the temperature as i was talking about the air conditioning there are two issues which are very important it, it comes it happens you know the complaint comes one is the food and the another is the air conditioning these two are very very important issues uh, so uh, one is to take care of the temperature where people are sitting right the lighting is of course is very important sound system is very very important and uh, there should be, and noise should not be there safety and sanitation safety is a very important issue uh, one should take care of that because sometimes it, an accident takes place and there's a fire takes place there should be availability of fire extinguishers and all that one has to take care of that issue air conditioning and air quality should be taken care of external noise should not be there it should be neat and clean cleanliness is a very very important issue the power supply is another very very important issue you know there should have power backup if by chance um, the light goes off there should have uh, generators available where the light will start immediately and uh, so uh, uh, and with a clean environment <clears throat> so uh, these are certain physical environment which is if it is available nobody bothers about it but when it is not there it really is going to create some a lot of uh, problem and that has to be uh, taken care of properly well uh, the next point is the refreshment is another thing <laughs> right this is something refreshment and lunch is a part of the thing and people who are going there uh, for a change so it, it is also required you know so discontentment should not be there you know uh, if there is a proper refreshment given it should be refreshing uh, but at the same time the people should not uh, be allowed to let sleep by giving uh, everything very good the lunch is very good the refreshment is very good so it should not be over so that people start sleeping but there is one very very important issue there uh, although the people should be taken care of their health should be taken care of they should be given proper food and refreshment but there should not be serving destruction sometimes in between the classroom as uh, there is a people start serving uh, the drinks and all that which is not desirable so one could better have some five minutes break where they can give that uh, refreshments or if there is a um, refreshment there should be some break for that so that is a integral part of the training program that should not be uh, ignored and it should be managed properly that is the issue you you cannot say that i will not give a refreshment i will not give the lunch to you but it has to be managed properly so it does not make any disturbance not people just uh, waste their time in taking those things that has to be taken care of the materials and equipment the materials and equipment are uh, very important issues now what are talking about the printed materials has to be made has to be properly prepared printed if it is need to be bounded binded so that has to be taken care of before and right so um, in proper time right it should not be shabby you know it should you know a good material gives a very good impression about the training program it should be properly bounded uh, and even if it is uh, maybe photocopy it doesn't matter but it should be at least a spiral bounding binding should be there it should be properly given the printed material and it should be available in time when it is to be delivered to the people the slides are to be prepared beforehand right it has to be prepared beforehand and the trainer uh, has to go through the slides even before going to the uh, training for actual training the charts if it is to be made those are to be made beforehand and wherever needed it has to be uh, hanged on the walls where of the room before and similarly the posters are to be um, kept inside the room wherever it is these are got certain visual effects you know uh, as we know that uh, for any training program the three uh, we have to think of the three things very carefully for delivering the training the auditory inputs 
the visual inputs as well as the kinesthetic inputs. And then because the people have got different uh, styles of getting the learn, you know. So if it is not all the, there's a combination of all these three, you should be there. You know, some people are highly visual and if there is no visual things available, then and they may not, uh, the, the training may not be transferred to them. They may not really understand and get the issue properly. And so therefore, uh, there should a proper mix of all these visual, auditory, and kinesthetic things, kind of things. For kinesthetic things, we can have group discussions. We can have people to deliberate something on their own. They should become involved in the process and they, even the questionings and all that. So, and for the visual effect, the charts, postures, uh, posters are going to give it a lot of impact. The time frames is important. Here, the time frame means that everything has to be completed within time. You know, uh, the printed material, the material has to be prepared in time. The binding has to be done in time. It should be ready whenever it's required. So everything and every for every aspect, there should be proper. And as a trainer, as an in charge of training, you should note down and jot down each and every work. And if you uh, give the responsibility to somebody to complete those things, you should see that everything is being done properly in time and the necessary follow-up is being done so that nothing should be kept for the last moment. So there'll be unnecessary panic as well as there'll be a lot of disturbance. There should have sufficient time for everyone to see the things that how it's going to happen, what extra, what new thing they need to do. That Therefore, the allocation of work should be done properly. And everyone's job is nobody's job. So therefore, everyone, uh, people should be given their responsibility, their respective responsibilities, and those should be managed in time. Equipments, wherever, it, sometimes it's required that equipments, the, you do not have the equipment of your own, you may have to order the equipment. Maybe you're hiring a hall, but you do not have the LCD project and you get the projector for somewhere else. So you have to order for this equipment, it should ensure that those things are available in time. So LCD projector or the microphone, if you order it separately, those are to be ordered in time and ensure that things are being delivered to you in time also. <clears throat> and for that, the proper follow-up should be done. And the quality has to be ensured. You know? A small thing, a microphone is not working properly. It's going to create a lot of disturbance in the training program. You must ensure the quality as well as the cost. And for that, one has to make take a little uh, work, I'm in the little labor, I had to go to different places, inquire about the cost involved and the quality in it, and then they should decide for the materials and equipments which are available at different places, right? All these things are very, very important and one should be, one should take it very meticulously. The next is the trainers, and the trainers manual. The manual is very, very important thing, you know? And uh, the purpose of the trainer manual is that by giving it, preparing a trainer manual, we make the trainer to work within certain norms. You know, it, it's not desirable at all point, however good the trainer may be, that he will do the thing the way he likes. The organization is going to conduct the training program it has got its own objective. And to fulfill that objective, it has got certain parameters on which the training is to be given to ensure the proper transfer of training and ultimately the, how it is going to really benefit the organization. So uh, the trainer manual should contain the instructional strategy and some of the important issues of the strategy, that what kind of material should be there, what is the, um, what are the material should be provided there, how the training is to be provided, important key information should be incorporated there. So it becomes handy for the trainer. He is not to search for things when it is required. And that though there, the certain things are very, very important like the lecture materials. And the synopsis of the lecture materials and the lecture points should be there so that uh, the, the trainer if required can have a glance over that and can so that important issues may not be uh, left. So lecture materials, lecture points, any other supplemental readings. So a trainer can at time, even before the training program, he can go through those and uh, and uh, make up his own mind how to go about the training program. The various exercises those are required to be done. So a trainer can uh, brush through those things and can see how he's going to do it. Uh, I will have blank sheets there, uh, blank sheets along with that. 
So those these things will will be, uh, I mean, contained in the trainer's manual, and the trainer manual is is uh, really very very important, and the most important issue with the trainer manual, I must tell you, and there are two issues involved in it. Number one, uh, the, the both the things are contradictory to each other, but those both the things are important in the sense that a trainer should not be dependent upon on anything he is a real trainer who can go and stand and start giving the delivery the giving delivery of the training program this is one but at the same time a trainer should be able to have all the points and everything should be ready with him he should know about that that what he is going to deliver and at the same time there is a psychological boost up when things are ready with him even although he may not refer to that you may not see to that the very feeling that i have got things with me if required i can see it that itself is going to boost up the confidence of the trainer you know and this is my out of my my practical experience i'm telling you 99 times out of 100 i do not see any contents or anything in inside the classroom but i keep it with me and that gives me a boost up is if required i can see it so that psychological boost up at the same time you can bind or you can give a outline to the trainer that how should how he should conduct the training session a discipline is created by that so trainer the, the, the so what i was discussing right now is that the manual which is very important now coming to the trainee's manual again this is equally important a trainee can refer to the manual what is being discussed in the classroom he can go through the reading materials to supplement his understanding the training manual the the key points available there important information available there extra study which is required any exercise that has to be done there any sheets available there where you can write down the notes in the classroom itself those are going to be very handy for uh, the trainees and uh, that becomes a complete document with him which you can refer to later on so the training manual is again is a very important issue and i have also talked of trainers manual right here all the other separate slide for that but those trainer as well as training for both of them the manual is to be prepared before and and should be given to them the the manual may be of different kinds it may be a three ring binder depending upon how much cost you are going to you can afford to make for and the target group for whom you are giving it hey you can make handouts you can make some exercises you can make some contents right so apart from the the manual you know those so you can there is a um, visual of the different kinds of binders it may be two ring binders a three ring binder four binder three ring binder depending upon what depending upon the material that you're going to give the volume of the material and the kind of program that you are really going to make and if you are a freelance trainer what kind of expenditure you can afford to make per participant that becomes an important guideline for uh, seeing that <clears throat> now coming to the trainer manual which we have already talked about uh, yes that gives us apart from that what i have said what trainer needs to know and needs to do and how he has to do it he get a guideline for that the last moment cursory look at that can we really give him a boost up to go to the class and help him uh, it becomes a visual aid for the trainer what is expected from the trainer the organization is conducting a training program with an objective that at the end of the pro training program how the train the trainee should behave what outcome should be available there and that that becomes a very important issue and so the uh, expectations will be written there the structure of the program itself how the program is going to move from logically how it is going to move from the beginning to the end that structure is there the blueprint of the entire the entire training delivery should be given in that trainer's manual and as i told you in itself having that trainer manual with uh, the trainer himself trainer will have a very sense of uh, confidence that i have, have it with me and that that confidence is very very important <clears throat> that confidence is really going to uh, take a, a big role uh, for the trainer to go inside the classroom now there should have lecture notes right 
Uh, I mean, because there is a convention that lecture notes should be given on the right side and some instructions on the left side that what we should do at this point of time, where you should give some example, where you should, I mean, during the training program, during the delivery of the training program, sometimes they may have to deal with notes for understanding the training material, the content, understanding. On the left side, then with instructions, right, where they should give some example, where you should conduct some exercise with the people so that they can have a very kinesthetic feeling about uh, the feeling of that uh, entire training program, you know, those are very, very important. And as, as such, as you know, a training delivery has to be complete in its all respects. In the sense, it should contain the, uh, the good auditory by the trainer, good visuals by the trainer that may be through the PowerPoint presentations and all that. At the same time, it should have an involvement of the people. The involvement of the people is possible by questioning them, allowing them to take participate, to participate in the program, discussion, right? Uh, or kind of seminars or some kind of physical exercises. By doing that, they become more um, attached to the training, involved in the training program. So it's better always that before and we should decide that where where we're going to place those exercises, where we're going to place those examples so that um, the trainer can immediately understand where he, what he should do and at what point of time he should be ready with that. So those instructions can be given on the left-hand side and it becomes very handy for the trainer. The expected information and response in the sense, sometimes it happens in a training for a trainer also. It is not always necessary that he knows or he remembers each and every point of a training program. And it's a, it's a reality that if you are a trainer, you will find that at times, maybe something which you do not know or something very new you do not know, or maybe something which you have forgotten. In both the cases, there's nothing to cut a sorry figure, you know. It, see, number one, I would say that trainer should be ready to handle that situation by his talks, right? He can always say that, uh, I'll, be, I'll be referring to this point a little later, right? That is all possible. At the same time, as a trainer, one should try to think about what are the expected things, what are the expected questions or information he may have to, uh, people may ask. That has to be kept in mind so that uh, those informations can be jotted down there. At times, I'll give a very small example. Sometimes it happens, you have forgotten the expansion of abbreviation. There's an abbreviation of five letters and you have forgotten what is the expanded form of that. It's quite possible. At times it may not come. So if you write that jot down, wherever there is any abbreviation, you write down the whole thing, the full thing, you will not cut a sorry figure. You can always talk about that. So what are the expected information which the people can ask at times and what is, should be the response that can be jotted down in that trainer's manual. The special terms, special expected terms which the trainees can always ask you, may ask you, there's a possibility. So if you sit for some time and think about the whole subject and the topic, you'll find out there are 10, 20 odd, uh, I mean, special terms, uh, possible terms which one can ask and should be ready with that. You should have at least a, a meaning of that. What is that? What is basically is it is? And that will be enough for a, a trainer to handle that situation. So those spatial terms are to be taken care of. There are at times, again, another thing, the current issues involved with a particular subject. You know very well about the subject, but there may be certain things which has happened right now, very, very recently, which maybe you have not taken care of. So it's better to jot down those current events related to the purpose. You are talking about the budget, you must know what are the budgets, what are the conditions, of, what are the special characteristics of the budget. So you know, those, those information should be, those information which are directly or remotely connected with that particular topic, one should start thinking, jot down those and keep it in that manual so that at the, whenever there is a training program and whenever it is necessary, he can refer to that and he doesn't cut a sorry figure and doesn't feel bad about it. I mean, there, although there's nothing to feel bad about it, you should be able to handle it. But it's all better to respond at the right time. That becomes makes the credibility much better, you know. And so therefore, a trainer's manual is a whole thing, is a complete thing, which can really become a handy and a very big um, help to the uh, 
to the trainer to really conduct the training program effectively. Uh, we have already talked about the equipment, but then again, I'll, again, I'll talk about the equipment further. The <clears throat> video monitor, I mean, the, the computer is there, and the days of VCR is gone. OSP, days of OSP is also gone, but these are there. Maybe somewhere you may find it, overhead projector, the personal computer, LCD, liquid crystal display, uh, it should be available, and you should know if you do not know how to run it, at least there should be somebody who can help you to run that. You should be careful about that. And it should be properly placed and it should be in a running condition. And if there is an LCD projector, there must be a screen and that screen should be properly placed and adjusted before and before the training program uh, takes place. So that's a, that, that again is an important issue. The sound system, as I told you earlier also, it is a very important issue. If the sound is not good, then the alternative is that you may not use the microphone. When you don't use the microphone, you have to shout. And the people, it may not be audible. So the sound system has to be proper. They should have proper microphone and the sound box placed at proper places. The availability of extension cords and outlets is very, very important. Extension cords, and sometimes it's required. Extension cords required for running your PC. Or, um, or your LCD projector, or for any other purpose, uh, if it is required, those things are available at the time. The board, and the, although the days of chalk is gone, but if it is there, at least the whiteboard should be there, and uh, the duster and marker should be there properly. Flip chart and tripod, wherever it is required, because pictures are placed on the tripod, that's properly placed. If required, uh, the question of um, in the what do you call the electricity is that power option will be there so there is a power backup the generator that and if the generator is there the availability of diesel uh, should should be there it should ensure that it is available uh, so that uh, they may not have any difficulty in uh, whenever there is any power off. so i would like to have a little uh, A recap of whatever you have done so far, right? I've talked about, yes, uh, the breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are required for uh, the rooms which is required for making people doing some kind of discussion for or some kind of preparing some kind of case study or some group discussions and all that for keeping the materials inside that, right? And so, so the breakout room should be available in particular, when you're talking about the off-site uh, training facility, now where you may have to keep your materials and all that, the breakout rooms are required. The physical environment of the hall should be, uh, the training venue should be proper, the temperature should be proper, the lighting should be proper, the sound system should be proper, safety and sanitation is a very important issue, uh, that should be taken care of. Air conditioning and the air quality should be proper. And those are to be ensured before that. External noise should not be there. It should have a very clean environment. The power supply should be adequate. Refreshment, not a small thing, very important issue that people should get proper refreshment so that they become happy, they remain happy, and they can, they're totally involved in the training process. So avoid the discontentment. It should be refreshing but they should not sleep. I mean, it should not be so well, they should start sleeping and the serving destruction should not be there in between the training program. Mm. The materials and equipment should be, this is an important issue that requires, again, I'm telling you, the printed materials, the materials are to be prepared before. And the materials are very, very important thing because this is what the people are going to read after the training program is over. So that material is very, very important. And at the same time, one more thing which has come up to his mind, I must tell you, is sometimes what happens, whatever you're teaching in the classroom and the material that you're being supplied, those are poles apart. It should not be like that. That should have some relationship with what you are talking about in the classroom and the materials that you're supplying. It happens sometimes, some um, I mean, cut and paste material, from somewhere else here and there, 
is given as a bundle as a material and you are talking something else in the classroom that gives a very bad impression all right and therefore the printed material should be made before and from whatever sources you are making and your training and delivery should be uh, connected to that should be aligned with that all right and one should make the slides properly the powerpoint presentation should be made properly that that's a, that's an art that's very 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 important that presentation should be made properly uh, it should not be overcrowded and as you know that uh, and needless to say now there are two things which are very very important here number one the presentation the powerpoint presentation should have very minimum number of items there and it should be clean and neat and clean it should not be total full of the entire from the top to bottom the entire powerpoint presentation is given the history is given there until unless it is required sometimes it's required but otherwise it should be small at the same time as you know that people of the trainer should not totally depend upon that those should be only highlighted points and the trainer should be able to talk on that he should not just read out the printed the, the, the materials is given in the presentation that again gives a very very bad impression and people start taking uh, napping in the classroom itself right the slide should be prepared before and properly professionally prepared and the trainer a trainer's one of the biggest quality of a trainer is to prepare proper powerpoint presentation and i would always stress upon that trainer must prepare their presentation themselves one should not go that somebody should make a powerpoint presentation and he should talk on that it's useless you know you must make it because then you understand what is the logical sequence of the flow of the subject you're going to talk about to the people so that should be properly made keeping in mind the entire subject and the logical sequence of the subject matter so that the people the transfer of training takes place properly right that's an important issue the charts and posters are to be uh, tested wherever it is required to give a visual effect everything should be done within the time frame right uh, work should be allocated to people equipment should be ordered in time follow up should be made properly and for everything one has to ensure the quality and the cost of the uh, equipment that is important issue the train is manual is important because the trainee is going to whatever they are learning in the classroom later on they are going to study that so that will reinforce their understanding reinforce their uh, i mean whatever they have learned those are reinforced so the, the lecture material the learning points and uh, the supplemental reading exercises and blank sheet should be there where they can note down their point that is very important but that can be given uh, any form depending upon the cost that is being incurred and that may be binder that may be in the form of handout exercise contents that whatever you give that should be neat and clean and should be presentable to them right well and then <clears throat> and the trainer manual is very very important very important issue because the trainer is uh, you have to give all kinds of information to him so that he can even before the training person go through that and he can chalk out his training program how he's going to deliver what exercises he can do they're going to do now these things are very very important along with the lecture notes the instructions the expected information which he, we may have to um, come across from the participant the special term terminology the current events what's going to happen all these things should be uh, encapsulated within the trainer trainer manual and that will really help the man the, the trainer to do the training program and apart from that he will have a sense of confidence within him that i have got all the materials with me wherever required and i can really um, scan through that and give the response to it the equipments are to be seen very carefully before and that thing should be in order it should be in running condition right uh, the video monitor hp pc lcd screen sound system extension cord jaw flip chat generator and etc so all these things are important for a training to happen but what generally is not talked about but in the real situation in the most practical situation these are certain things which is really going to complement the entire training program the success of the entire training program so as a trainer you should have a clear idea a very very clear idea about all these things so that your training program become very very successful now with that we are coming in to the end of today's uh, training issue but one issue was left which i'm going to talk about that uh, this is again another another important part of the conducting a training program making the personal 
personal arrangements you call it personal arrangements you call that making the travel issues you know and when you are going to call people from outside right when people have to come to your place or people have to go somewhere outside you have to make uh, the travel the travel arrangement so that you may have to book the air ticket or the train ticket railway tickets and all that for the learners as well as for the facilitators it may be your in house uh, trainer or it may be a guest faculty depending upon that you have to make all the travel arrangement and that should be done before and so that uh, don't keep it in chance because sometimes the reservation is not available so that's an issue the lodging is very important now where they will stay local travel uh, and that social event work is going to happen you have to make arrangement for that if there is any social event or recreation is to be conducted in that uh, offline play offline so sometimes it happens since it is a few days rest from the day to day routine so after the training hours people may have some social event have some kind of recreation or some kind of sightseeing so one has to make arrangements for that before and and those are all very practical issue <clears throat> now after saying everything there as you have pointed out that what is going to happen in today's online environment as online environment as i look at it has really opened a very new opportunities for the people you know the online training program itself it makes a lot of involvement in the people and uh, times to come it is generally being failed that number of participant is participation is more now because now people are free to join the training program at the leisure time so time is coming even if the covid goes tomorrow the online training program is going to have its place keep its presence um uh, which was not there earlier uh, see we used to listen to the webinars and all that in other countries but in india it was comparatively less but now it is being it's a bit being a practice now people are taking the advantage of this uh, this situation so one has to understand how to use those softwares like zoom or um, go to meeting or google software is there and so uh, those things one has to be one has to practice and understand and know how these are to be done it should be uh, conversant with all these things it should be conversant with how to use the the microphone how to use the lighting arrangement in a, in his room where he, from where he can talk to the entire world now the open the entire world is open to us now you see in the earlier days when you used to do um, a real physical program you used to go for arrange for a hotel you used to find a room find and then you used to call people and as such whenever there is a training program when you going to the, take some hotel and make a, some program the cost is more so the inviting cost to the people is also more you know but today when it is online program you can do the same program with lesser cost and there is no issue of any arrangement of any hotels and all that you can reach to the entire world sitting at your home which is not possible earlier the entire world had to come to you which is a very difficult task so if you can look into it it's an, it's the biggest opportunity for the trainer to be connected with the entire world if you can really equip yourself and change yourself develop yourself uh, and learn such small things you know certain softwares how to do it uh, how to use the microphone how to use the lighting and all that so uh, in a small room you have got and you have got a pc personal computer from where you can reach to the entire world only thing is you have to make your materials uh, which you can give online you can make a powerpoint presentation and you should be ready to talk to the people right so if once you become accustomed to that this is going to open a big world in front of you which was not possible in in the days of uh, the physical classrooms right so i think um, this is should take one should take this as an opportunity for a trainer i must say this is an opportunity which they can really encash to uh, to to i mean to be with the people all over the world on any issue he is competent in so the first thing is you have to develop something in which you are competent and you develop that competence and you share it to the entire world right there, there's no i mean there's no doubt the people right only thing is that you have to use this medium as well as you have to uh, promote your program through the social media and all that you know 
which you probably have got a separate class for that we'll be talking about. So you should be able to uh, promote your programs and produce to the people. Now, uh, I would like to, I mean, today's program will be finished here, but yet of course, if any questions that you have got in your mind, whatever I wanted to tell you, I've talked on these particular topics, right? So anything that you've got to ask me, I, you're most welcome. Yeah, hello. There's nobody, everyone is left. No response from your side. Again, I am repeating the same thing as I said the last time that everything is understood or nothing is understood. Sir, just okay. Ritu, and thank you very much, sir. It's a comment. And this, uh, itself was so interesting that uh, we could understand everything, sir, what you ever gave. You, uh, you gave the points. And thank you very much for highlighting the online opportunity. Definitely, sir, we will try to work on that. So it's just a comment. It was a wonderful session, sir. Thanks for all inputs. I should definitely go in for the online. I am telling you, this is the you should um, you know, strike the iron when it is hot. At the right time, if you can really make a use of this facility, this online training programs, you are really going to the top. You can have an access of the entire world. It depends upon how much, what, how the program is to be developed by you, and you can share to the world. This opportunity could have never got when you're in a physical situation. Which you have got right now. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. No question. I still will have to five minutes. So. <clears throat> Maybe uh, as we have uh, left a few minutes, sir, it will be nice if you can just uh, differentiate location, uh, uh, site, and off site. You were sharing some difference, sir, probably between two programs. That was not very well understood by me, sir. The, which were the programs? Location uh, specific programs okay, okay. Uh, and the off, off site. Okay. I... Now, off site program and locational program. Right? There is a big difference, I tell you. An off-site program is a program where you are conducting a program away from your place of activities, from your organization where you are there. Say, for example, your organization is uh, placed in uh, Delhi and you're going to conduct a program in Mumbai. Maybe because of various reasons, maybe because of proximity of many of the people or you want to change, right? The people want some change, the trainees want some change and you are going to conduct a program there in Mumbai. But then when you're conducting a program in Mumbai, then everyone from the entire India will be reaching there. Right? Yes. So if there are 50 people, the 50 people will go there. The cost is involved. Now say, for example, there is a situation and when the government has come out with a, uh, come out with a new um, new, uh, new terminology or new topics or new regulation, say, for example, you have to start with GST. You have to, I mean, uh, use GST in your organization, they to implement GST in your organization. Now, suddenly, and you may have 10,000 employees in the organization or 5,000 employees in the organization, you have to give training to all of them. Hmm. Now, calling those 5,000 people in one particular place from different parts of India is becomes going to be very, very costly. Okay. Now, what is the way out? Way out is that you don't let those people to come you only make a say there are 10 places where you can, you are going to want to conduct program, give training to the people. So they are located at 10 different locations, maybe Kolkata, Mumbai, uh, uh, Chennai, uh, somewhere like that. So what you do is for those 10 places, you can select 20 faculties, two each, maybe two each or one each, depending upon the subject matter. So you can send 20 people at those 10 locations. So your cost of traveling and lodging and boarding will be only with those 20 people. Mm -hmm. In place of 
five thousand people or ten thousand people. So mm -hmm. one set of twelve people goes there in one particular place and mm -hmm. gives a training. Maybe that training for say they give every day they give fifty people or hundred people, and then five days they complete five hundred people in one look one location. Likewise, there are ten locations, so they they complete five thousand people. And the cost involved will be very less, and as well as the training will be imparted simultaneously at ten different places. So the training will be done, conducted in a very short period of time, right? So those are known as locational program where the participants do not come, but where the faculties or the trainers go from, and they are displaced from one place to the other places, and the cost is involved only for their their expense, their traveling and boarding and lodging and all that. As well as the training program is conducted in a very short span of time. That's what is known as locational program. I think you have understood now. Yes, yeah, so thank you very much, sir. Got your point. So uh, <clears throat> this is all about uh, today's program, and so maybe next Sunday or I do not know right now what is going to happen. We'll be coming out with our next topics on this, and uh, I hope we'll go through this and if make any some certain questions out of this, so that next time when we meet, we can talk about that. With that, thank you very much. All the best. Take care. God bless you.